Hi, I'm Rob, and uh, today we're going to look at the A4SC and uh, just get to know it a little bit. So we're going to start with uh, orientation. And uh, starting on the left side, you can see that th this particular unit has a dust collection system. Uh, we have the, the, the canisters here where the vacuum is and uh, the collection buckets down here. Uh, all the valving and stuff is in this panel for the dust collection system and then you can see the the hoses running over uh, to the boots uh, which I'll show you in just a minute and um, all of our all of our controls to run the drill are up here you have the steering and uh, the travel uh, forward or back um, all your switches for feeding and starting the drills uh, the lifting the bed that's all located here uh, air regulator is here for your feed lines. Uh, the crab steering is down here. Uh, you've got uh, on our bed assembly, you have the, the height adjustment for the bed assembly here. Lift cylinder. Now this unit has our, our, our paint marker on it. Uh, you have the, the paint can on this side and the pointers on the other side and we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, of course you have your sliders right here and the drills themselves, the drill steel, uh, the drill bearing guide right here. Um, and then here's the, the boot that I was talking about with the dust collection system. And uh, you got height, your uh, depth adjustment rods here. Uh, all of our, our safety pins holding those in place. And uh, if we walk around the other side here I'll show you oil is located. Uh, you have your oil fill right here and uh, your your gauge and reservoir and uh, oh and then the, the canister where uh, your owner's manual is and uh, just keep that in there at all times. Okay we at Minic uh, care about your safety. You can see I have on uh, the appropriate uh, safety gear uh, I'll add the ear protection once we start drilling here. Uh, but please make sure that you wear the proper safety gear, whatever your uh, job site, state laws, OSHA uh, require, please wear those. All right, we have the air supply line connection right here. Uh, this is your main source of air. Uh, make sure you use the proper safety equipment. Uh, we do require a two inch line coming in with 120 PSI. Um, you want to check uh, on your gauge over here, you have your incoming line pressure. Uh, that at the machine you do have 120 PSI. Okay, now also for the air requirements, uh, it'll vary for each machine. So for each rail system you have, you need technically 92.5 CFM. Um, a flow so uh, just for ease we round it to a hundred uh, just to make sure you have ample air for the drills and get uh, the best performance so on this machine you know obviously you have uh, four rail systems here so 400 uh, CFM is what you will want to uh, look at for your compressor and then uh, now this machine also has a dust collection system so we'll walk around back here And then for each, each rail, again, you need 50, an additional 50 CFM. So if I were adding it up, I'd say, okay, 100 per rail plus uh, another 50 for each uh, dust collection. So I need 150 uh, for four. So you need a 600 CFM uh, uh, coming through the machine uh, to run it. So you want to figure that for your compressor. All right, right here we have our uh, air regulator to adjust our feed pressure. And uh, like I said, you want that uh, between 20 and 24 on the gauge up here on your feed pressure. And if you need to make adjustment, just back off the, the nut, uh, make your adjustment, and then tighten that back up. Okay, we want to look at the control panel and just become familiar with it. Um, everything is marked on here, but we do want to uh, take a look at the, the switches. Uh, 
The first one here is the, is the switch for the, the bed, lift up and down. Um, and then across here is all your drill uh, on and off switches. So you, right now all the drills are in the off position and, uh, and then the main switch is, is in the off position. So what you could do is you could turn them all, all on and then uh, and keep this, uh, the main switch off. And uh, then when you just switch that on, all the drills are on. Or you could, uh, you know, you could turn uh, just the first and the fourth one on and uh, just run those by switching the two and three to the off position. Um, so it gives you a little bit of uh, control there on which drills you run. And then uh, also here's uh, the feed in and out. So it's the same situation, uh, in, or in and out. And uh, here's your crab steering switch to turn that on. We'll talk about the crab steering in a little bit. Uh, your paint marker switch, you hit that and that actually uh, sprays paint to mark where your next uh, pointer should land. And uh, this is the brake on and off. Uh, we have the, the control for the, the steering here, uh, turns the wheels side to side to steer, as well as the travel forward and back, or if you're on the other side, forward and back. And, uh, and then we have the, the gauges up here for your uh, air pressure, uh, your feed pressure here, which is uh, should be between 20 and 24, and uh, your incoming line pressure, as we covered before, should be at 120. Okay, we want to talk a little bit about the drill steel, and then uh, I'll show you how to put it in the machine. Um, our standard units come with a four and a quarter uh, shank by seven eighths hex, and then uh, 24 under collar. And uh, to put it in, we have the latch right here. I'm going to pull that down and open that up so it can slide up in there. And then uh, with the wrench, and loosen that. Slide it to the side and op open. And then you'll feel that slide up in. You can latch it. You put the latch back up. Then we just want to close her back up and tighten it down with, with a wrench. Okay, now we're gonna uh, actually drive the machine into place here. Uh, you wanna make sure you're always facing the machine and uh, facing the direction that you, you're going to travel. And uh, so I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go forward here and just push the travel forward. Okay, now that we have it in position, we want to make sure we turn the brake on. And then uh, what we're about to do is to lower the bed. We want to take the safety pins out first uh, that are holding the drills in place. Uh, make sure that your, your bed safety pin is in. Remember, you never want to uh, take these pins out if you're not connected to air. Uh, the air pressure is what uh, keeps these up and they'll you know slide down and then so once the safety pins are removed from the drills now we want to remove the safety pin that allows us to lower the bed and then making sure that there's uh, no one in the area in which the bed is going to go down uh, once we've made sure there's no one there we'll go ahead and, and put the bed down just by flipping the switch and the air cylinder will allow that to go down Okay, and then uh, once the bed is down, what you want to look for is that all the all the boots here, where the dust collection system are, they're all uh, you know up tight against the you can see down in here up tight against the slab. Uh, that your uh, caster wheels are all up against the slab, uh, so that we're all nice and straight. Okay, what we're gonna uh, do is set the depth of the hole that we're actually gonna drill. And we have the, the, 
guide here in this the stop rod just want to loosen that up and what will happen is uh, we'll set this and then it'll stop when it hits the, the stop pad and um, the easiest way to do this is to actually feed the drill in okay so we want to come up to the control panel uh, make sure our master switch is on uh, for the feed and then go over to drill number four and then hit the feed button in and then that will uh, fill up with air and move forward now we know that our drill steel is right up against the slab so this distance whatever we measure this distance is is uh, going to be how deep the hole is so if we want a 12 inch hole what we're going to do is just slide this forward to, to 12 inches and tighten it up and then that that that'll give you your 12 inch hole Okay, when we set the, the height of where on the slab we're drilling, where our holes are located, uh, we have two height adjustment bolts. Um, they're located on both sides. You have one here and then one right here on the other side. And what you want to do is uh, with an inch and a quarter wrench, uh, you can just spin that and uh, lower and heighten and then you have the, the locking uh, nuts to hold it in place. Okay, so to do the actual drilling, um, we have all the switches in the off position. So uh, let's say we want to drill with hold, uh, drill number four. We want to turn the feed and the on, drill on switch both to the on position. Um, and nothing happened because uh, our main switches are not on. So this way, this allows you to uh, turn which drills you want to uh, run uh, and then hit them both to start at the same time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the feed on. And then right before uh, I want to put my dust mask on. And now I, I turn the main on. that I, I turned the, uh, the feed back to the off position that took the drill back to its original starting position and then turned the drill off. Uh, the vibration there uh, helps to pull it out smoothly. And then once, the, uh, once all the drills are back out, you know, make sure that you turn all the drills off in between uh, uh, positions, in between drilling positions because uh, that'll cause a lot of wear on your drills. Okay, we want to talk about crab steering. Uh, it's a really nice feature that we offer on our drills. And uh, what it does is it turns the wheels in the same direction, just slightly, uh, keeping the bed sucked up against the slab uh, so that there's not all the readjusting all the time. And uh, so in order to do that, right now we have the crab uh, switch in the off position. Um, we want to turn that on. And then, what we want to do is um, actually move the steer control and you'll see the the wheels move and right now they're both the wheels are in this position what we want to do is get them in the same position so we'll go the opposite direction and you'll hear a click underneath and that's it fall the crab falling into position okay so once uh, you move the steering you'll notice uh, and the, the crab steering actually falls into place and you hear that click um, You'll notice that both wheels will be turned uh, so that it's the drill bed is being sucked against the against the uh, slab. And uh, since we're traveling this way, we're going to want the wheels turned in this position, and uh, then we can travel forward. Okay. Then, if you want to take it out of crab, it's just it's just the reverse. Hit the switch, and then uh, pull the steering. You'll hear the big. 
uh, click underneath, and then uh, you'll notice that the wheels are now moving opposite of each other for steering. And we'll straighten those back out. Okay, we want to look at the, the paint marking system. Uh, very handy for drilling consecutive holes down a long, uh, like a, a freeway or airport. Uh, if you know that your, uh, we're just going to do an example here. If you know that your uh, hole centers are 18 inches, okay, what you want to do is, is set your paint marker 9 inches from this first drill, okay. And then on the other side, we also have a marker, uh, a pointer. And you want to also set that at 9 inches from the other side. Having 9 inches on both sides will give you the full 18 inches so that as you mark the paint and then move the drill forward, um, when the pointer hits the, that, uh, the paint mark down there, you'll know that you're at that 18 inch interval. To actually uh, spray the paint mark, uh, there's a, a button right up on the control panel here called marker and all you would do is, is push that and you can see it leaves a, a paint mark right on the, the concrete there. do is uh, lift the bed when we're ready to travel and uh, we want to just hit the switch here um, and before we hit the switch we want to make sure there's you know no one in the area that uh, could possibly get hit by the bed so we hit the switch and then that will lift the bed Okay, then we want to put the the travel the bed travel pin back in. Make sure that's locked. And then we can come around and, and reattach the pins that keep the drills up here. Okay, so after we've pinned up our drills back into position and the lift bed pin is in, um, we want to uh, remove the uh, air source, but we want to go back to the compressor and uh, turn off the main supply of air. And uh, before it's safe to remove that, the main hose, then we need to actually bleed the air to remove all the pressure. So we want to do that by actually turning on one of the drills and allowing it to uh, bleed. So we'll just turn on uh, drill number four here and then turn on the main. And you'll actually see the, the drills kind of fall into position because remember without the pins in they'll fall down so that's why we wanted to pin those first. Okay, um, here at Minic we care about your safety so uh, we've labeled the machine uh, with some warning stickers. Um, please, before you operate the machine, take a look at, at where they're located. You know, we have some here marking pinch points. When this rail will slide down, there's a pinch point there. Uh, there's a pinch point here and down here. The stickers all point out areas that uh, are dangerous. Um, you know, keep the, keeping the guard on on the side here. Uh, standing clear when uh, the bed lifts and lowers. Um, all your safety uh, precaution, eyes, ears, and uh, safety equipment. Uh, we have here uh, one that says uh, the machine is not equipped with parking brake. When there's no air connected to the machine, um, there is no parking brake on it. So it can roll and move, so you make sure you chalk the tires. Um, when the air is on, then your brake switch will uh, keep the machine from rolling. Uh, we, we recommend that before you start using the machine, there's, uh, we have the owner, owner's manual right here on the, uh, 
on the drill itself in this canister so that that will give you a lot of safety advice as well um, if you have any questions at all uh, we always put our, our phone number right here you can call us uh, it's on every machine we make so you can call us and, and we'll answer any questions that you have okay uh, if you feel like you're not getting enough uh, enough suction there is a purge button right here and what that does is it sends a blast of air through the filter and then through the uh, hose to knock out any debris that might uh, be in there. If you feel like uh, you're still not getting enough suction after that, then go ahead and uh, uh, replace the, uh, the filter or clean out the filter uh, located inside the canister. And our dust collection system here, um, there is a filter on the inside that, that we'll need, you'll need to check and replace and clean. Um, and uh, you access it th through the, the bottom. So when you empty your debris, you remove the pin, and then just lift, the, lift that up and that'll come down. So now, now you can dispose your debris in the proper ways. And then up inside here is a, uh, is a big butterfly wing and you just undo that okay so here just the, the butterfly bolt or a nut and uh then that will slide right back up in there okay and then when you put that filter back in and, and put the uh butterfly nut back in you want to make sure that you got that seated right up against the top, the, the filter. Um, and you'll know if it's not because you'll get dust that'll come out of the top here. And then once you have your filter back in, you seat the bucket back on the black uh, stripping. And then put your T-bolt back up on top and then you can lock your bucket back in place and then replace the pin and you're ready to go again. Okay, we have the oil reservoir right here. Uh, you can see and it has an oil gauge to let you know the, the level of oil that's in there. Uh, you can fill it right here at this port and uh, you want to make sure that you use rock drill oil. Um, it does have uh, a specific tack to the oil, plus it doesn't uh, foam with all the air pressure that's going through. Uh, you want to make sure you keep this um, topped off because it does lubricate the whole system. It lubricates your, your drills, uh, your drive motors, um, everything that needs oil on the inside of the machine, it does lubricate. So keep that uh, level full. Uh, throughout the machine, uh, there are grease points. Uh, you can see a couple of them right here. Um, just as a you know, daily maintenance, make sure things are well lubricated. It helps the machine run a lot smoother. At the beginning of every day, uh, give the machine a good look over uh, for, for loose bolts. The machine does vibrate a lot. Um, two key areas you might want to um, check are uh, this latch right here. You want to make sure that those are tight. Uh, not over tighten though, just uh, snug. Uh, you can actually pinch off the rotation inside the drill by over tightening. Um, here's another bolt here that holds the head of the drill on. Uh, th those are both uh, vibration points that could uh, unloosen. Just keep a good eye on them. Uh, I did want to let you know that uh, on our website there's a learning center. It's got lots of tidbits about your machine, how to store it for winter. Uh, you know, make sure you get the the oil and the motors over winter uh, so they don't rust out, and uh, how to do some tests to make sure you're getting enough oil to your drills and um, what you should look for, and uh, lots of good information to check that out as well.